So let's just look at how to edit the actual tabs. So in the previous video I showed you how to actually create a tab and now I want to show you how to edit a tab or add links to it. So here we have a list of the, the tabs that we currently have. And don't worry about the order. This order is just the order in which they were created, but the actual order in which you see them here is here. So uh, it doesn't have to correspond to this. So in the previous video, we created this new My Weather tab, and we also created these, which we created by using the Generate Default Menu button. So well, let's just see. We have three links here. First one is Edit, and that is actually what we're going to use to edit the links in that tab. This next icon is rename, and that, that means we can change the actual text or the icon, uh, leaving the actual content of that tab the same. So if we now set up some links in that My Weather tab, and then later on we decide we want to rename this to just um, Hello, uh, we would just click this and rename it to Hello. And this one is obviously delete, and if you do that, you're going to delete the entire tab from the menu, including all the links. So only do that if you really want to delete completely whatever is inside it, including the tab. So um, let's just start by following the wiki. So first thing we do is let's just do this My Weather tab, this new one we created. So we'll just click Edit. Okay, and I emphasize here that it's absolutely essential to read the wiki, otherwise you will not know what to do. Now, as you can see, um, this field is completely empty. And that's, that's understandable because we don't have anything here yet. So, let's just look at in the wiki what is necessary. So, first thing, um, you can create columns. And what I mean by that is, look at, for example, the My Weather, uh, sorry, the Weather tab, or the Weather Station tab, that's the one. You can see that in that tab, you can have the, the links in, in columns. So here's first column, here's column two, and here's column three. So here you can specify how to, where you want a new column. So in this case, as we can see, to create a column, you use this. Okay, so I'll just copy that and put it here. And always when you put a new command that is like a syntax of the menu or just a link, always use a new line to um, delimit them. So now we have a new column. So it's going to have a first column, but we don't have anything there yet. So let's look what's next. Well, this is how you would create the column. So we call in one and here would be the content. And then if you put this again here, it would jump and create a new column in the tab etc. Next thing we can do is put a heading for the column. And what I mean by heading is, if again we look at the weather station tab, you see that these are links. However, these are not. This is not a link. This is just a text and it's, and it's, it's emphasized and it's larger. So that's the heading. So every time you want to use a heading, as you see here, you use two arrows and then the name of the heading. So, Let's just put two arrows and we put volume one, just so that I can show you how it works. Okay, now we hit enter again. So now we've created a tab with first column and the heading, which should be column one. Let's just see what it does. Let's just hit save. And let's just look at our tab. And look, we have first column and we have the heading. No links here yet. So let's continue. So we go back to that page. And you don't have to obviously do this. I would just wanted to show you what's going to happen. So now we have the heading. Okay. So now we want to add some links. Um, yeah, this is just an explanation. Okay. One more thing you can actually do is you can put a horizontal line in the menu. Now let me see if we have some here. Probably not. Um, no, I haven't used this. So, okay, I will just show you how to do it. So for a horizontal line, you just put two dashes. And then either you just put two dashes, in which case the horizontal line would span the width of the column like this. Or you can put a percentage, uh, how wide you, that, you want that um, horizontal line to be 
uh, relative to the column width. So um, let's say we just want to put a horizontal line like this, and we want half of the column, so we'll put 50 as a 50%. And let's see what happens. Okay, and you see we have this this horizontal line here. Okay. So, and now let's put some links. Now, as I said previously, um, there are these default pages. And those are here, and they are part of the template. So, basically, there is not really a reason why you should not have those there, because you already have them in your template. Uh, and they use a special syntax where you just put default and the name of the page. But um, you don't really have to worry about this because this is created automatically by the the generate default menu link. And uh, I will I will show you what what those tabs look like later on. So now let's say that in this new my weather tab. Um, we want to insert a link to a new plugin that we installed. Now, why we might want to do that is quite obvious because um, in, in the previous video I showed you how to install the air traffic plugin. But that plugin is a plugin, it's not a default part of your page. So it's not included in the default menu. We now have this default menu, but there is no link here to the air traffic site. We need to add it. Okay, so how do we do that? So the syntax for that is use a dash plugin then brackets and then this xxxx has to be replaced by the namespace of that plugin and um, if you look here click info each plugin has a namespace and that namespace actually corresponds to the name of the folder here so Air traffic. That would be the namespace, as you as you see here with a capital T. The namespace is always the name of the folder in which it is saved here. Those are all the namespaces. So let's say we want to insert a new link to our plugin. So again, we use a dash plugin brackets, and then inside those brackets will be the namespace of that plugin. Here again, you have examples here in the wiki. So in this case, I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to paste it here, and I'm going to replace the axis with air traffic like this okay now let's see what happens okay and there we go we have our link here now um, this is sort of a shortcut because what's happening here is each link consists of you have to tell the template three things to insert a link here first you have to tell the template the name which is what is actually the text that you actually see here. Second thing is you have to tell the template the URL, in other words, where that link should take you. And third thing is you have to specify this icon. So this is a sort of a shortcut because I hard coded the actual parameters for this particular plugin. So if I put in air traffic, um, because I use this short syntax, this plugin like this, um, the template knows, aha, well this is the air traffic plugin and I hard coded what link and what icon it should use. So it it, it should it is working correctly. Right? You could try that. We could click that, it's taking us to that correct plugin. So in this case we don't have to worry about the icon, we don't have to worry about the link, we just put in a plugin and then the namespace of that plugin. And obviously we have to make sure that this plugin is installed. In other words, that you have it here in the plugins folder, that you downloaded it and install it first. So that was that was the next the last step as I told you. Once you set up that plugin in your control panel, the last thing is to add it to your menu so that it's actually visible on your site. And we want to have a link here so that the users can actually get to that site. Now um, that would be how to use a plugin. Um, you can also insert a custom link. And um, as I said previously, you need three pieces of information. You need the, the name of that link, you need the actual URL, and you need the icon. So let's just try um, inserting a new link. And let's just say 
Okay, just for the demonstration purposes, I'm going to use, I'm going to insert a link to my media template site here. Okay, so we put a new line. Now, first thing, as you can see here, is the text. So in this case, I'm just going to put media template. Now, next thing is the URL, the link. And as you can see, we have to put this vertical bar. So we put the vertical bar. And now we type in HTTP. And we type the URL. Make sure you use the HTTP. If you just use www, it will not work. Make sure it is the full URL. And then we put another vertical bar. And now it's asking me for an icon. And you might be asking, well, what icon? Well, it's the same icon as here. It's the exact same thing. So in this case, for media template, um, okay, well, let me find the logo that I use for my template. And let's just use that. And it's here. And again, it's part of the media template font. So we put empty icon dash logo. Okay. And this is our custom link. And we hit save. And let's see what happens. And there we go. We have our media template link. And if I click that, it's taking me to my site, so it's working correctly. And what you also see here is that it's using the logo icon. So this is how you create a custom link. And again, it's all described here. You have examples here. And that's it. Now, one more and crucial thing. Um, as you've seen here, we added this plugin here and the template knows which icon to use, which link to use and that's because I actually hard-coded it myself. I wrote down that information in the menu file. In the menu file there is information that for air traffic plugin use this and this link and use this and this icon and same for other plugins. However, there is one problem. The problem is that um, when you download this template, or when you download an update or update the template, the main files, uh, there will be a file called, uh, I'll show you, there will be a file called menu, this one. And that's the file that includes this information. However, the problem is that, um, imagine that I released the template, a new version, two months ago. And last week, I released a new plugin. Now, obviously, we have a problem. Because at the time when I updated the template, and at the time you downloaded this menu file, this plugin that I released last week did not exist. So, obviously, uh, the information about this plugin is not in that file, simply because it was not available at that time. So there are two ways of, of going about this. So first option would be um, hard coding it like an external link. In other words, theoretically, let's just say that this air traffic plugin was not included in my menu. So what can I do? Well, um, we can see it's called air traffic. So I, what I could do is I could simply use air traffic and then use the vertical bar and type in URL of that plugin, uh, which is always going to be something like this. Your site template, for example, sorry, com template, then plugins, air traffic dot, oh, sorry, slash index dot php. And then another vertical bar and the icon in this case was, I think, the FA, FA plane. Um, this will work because, in fact, in a sense, you're doing the exact same thing, uh, except that um, the information is not in the menu, so you provided that information yourself. Now, that works, but uh, there is an easier way. Let's say that you still want to use this short um, syntax for this new plugin. Is it possible? And the answer is yes. However, you have to do an extra step. And that step is, you have to go to my page and you click the download. Now look here, we have the main template file, here we have the update, and here we have a menu. And if we click that menu, here you can download this menu file, this one, 
and this file is, as you can see, updated uh, independently of the main file. So here you can, to make things simple, here you basically can download this menu file separately, just the menu file, and it, uh, it includes always information about all the currently existing plugins. So if you downloaded a plugin and um, it was the one that was released recently, uh, which you will be able to tell because if you add, if you use this short syntax and it was a new plugin, it will just not, not be here. You will not see it in your menu. And in such case, you have to go back to, to this site, to my, to my page and go to the menu section and then download this file. And when you download it, it's going to be only this menu.php. And then you simply go to your FTP and you go to your template root folder. And here we have the menu. And so we simply replace the original one. You can always replace it. So that's, and, and then, then, then you can use this short syntax because now we've updated our menu and this new menu file, this, this current one, uh, which I updated after that plugin was released already has that information. But again, this has to be done if you want to use the short syntax for a plugin that was released after a new version of the template was released. So again, it's all explained here. Now, the last thing I want to show you is, let's just go, let's just save this. Now, these are the weather station, weather, climate, astronomy. These are the tabs that were created uh, using the default menu. Now, let's just see what's inside there. Now, you see this is obviously slightly more complicated than what we had, but it's actually the exact same thing. So let's just take it step by step. So here we have the column, column, column. So theoretically, we should have three columns, and we do. So there, you can practice, there's not a limit on how many columns you can use, but obviously I would never go for more than four because on a, on a, on a, on a smaller monitor, uh, you would not see the last one. So I would definitely use three or four uh, at maximum. And so we have the columns. And here we have heading live. Here we have the heading reports. And let's look at this. So we have column heading, which says live. Then we have the default page, current data. And as I said, you don't have to worry about this. This is part of your template. And then we have interactive views, another heading. And then we have these three links. So how does it look? Yes, we have live, we have current data. Then we have the interactive use link. There we have the three links. And then we have reports, trends, and then we have a new column. Reports, trends, and a new column. And uh, for example, let's say that obviously I have this page, I want it there, but let's say I want interactive table above interactive graph. How do I do that? Well, it's very simple. We just take the, the interactive table link, delete it from here, and we insert it above there, save, and look, we have it here. So this, and the last thing I want to show you is, okay, let's just say we want to rename the weather station, or something that you will probably want to do is, here you have the station icon. Now let's say I'm not using this particular station and there are several links, uh, sorry, several icons available for different uh, stations. So let's just say that um, I'm using the Davis station. And so I obviously don't want this icon here. I want an icon of a Davis station. So how do I do that? Well, we're talking about the weather station tab, which is this one. So in this case, I'm not, I don't want to edit the, the content of it. And I don't want to delete it. I want to edit the actual tab. I want to edit these three parameters. So we hit edit. New name. Uh, well, we don't need anything. We're just going to stay with weather station. Namespace. Again, we don't have to worry about that. What we're interested in is this tab icon. So now it's asking me for a new, uh, new icon. And um, here, I basically put the, the namespace of the, of the station. And again, it's one of those icons that are available on that page if you click the here link. 
It's either the, the Meteor Template font or the Font Awesome. So in this case, I would put MTIcon dash, and I think it's Davis Pro 2, like this, and I hit OK. Now it's saved. Uh, let's just check here. So let's see. I think it's somewhere here at the bottom. Yes, here we go. So here, for example, is one station icon. Here is another one. And uh, in this case, we used this one, Davis Pro 2. This is the icon we now use. This is the namespace we used. And let's check if it worked. So let's just refresh the page. There we go. And now we have the Davis station icon. And similarly, I could change the, 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 the text here. So let's just say this is where we edit it. And if I click the second link, I don't want to call it weather station. I want to call it my station. Okay. Well, this can be my station. And the tab icon, I just want to leave the same. So we just hit cancel. And look, now it's called My Station. It's the original Weather Station tab. And the very last thing uh, is this Check My Menu. Now, what this button does is um, it will basically scan your plugins directory and it will find all the plugins that you have installed. And then it will load your menu, the, the what you specified, and it will check if you have all the links, all the links to all the plugins that you have in your menu. And if not, it will just notify you, okay, well, you're missing a link to plugin XY. And in such case, you're going to say, aha, well, I forgot to put that link. So you just add that link. Uh, one thing I should emphasize is that um, this will obviously only work if you use the short syntax. Yeah, if we use the plugin and then the brackets and the, the plugin name. If you add a link to the plugin using the normal URL. If you use if you if you add a link to your plugin using this fool as like if you use it as an external link because you don't want to update your menu, then it will not find it because it, it's just going to treat it as an external link. It's not going to know that this is a link to a plugin. So if this only works if you for, for the plugins where you used this syntax. And um, so that's basically all that this does. And it also checks your default pages, which are, as I said, the ones that you see here, these original ones, which are automatically added uh, when you click the generate default menu. So in the, this case, for example, for climate, we have this. And um, yeah, well, one more thing, and I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned this in the wiki. Um, it is possible to use also a flag, in which case for the icon, you put flag and then brackets and then the, the ISO 2 of the country. So if I wanted to use check flag, I would put for the icon, I would put this. And that's what some plugins use. So, well, no, it's, it's for the plugins. You don't see it here, but you would see it on my, on my demo site. So this is the demo site. We look here, we see we have some flags here. Those use the flag brackets icon that I just showed you. So this is how you create your menu. And obviously this is, you have quite a lot of options how you want to go about this. You can insert horizontal lines, you can insert plugins, external links, icons. It's up to you. And it's all explained in this section. And also make sure you, you read this, which is about what I said about updating the menu.